Good morning. Oh, wait, got to be afternoon, didn't it, somewhere along the way. Nice to see all of you today. Welcome to North Carolina Spring. How many of you are originally not from North Carolina? Raise your hand. So this is spring in North Carolina. Next week, it'll probably snow. So go out when we're done today and then finish it. Uh, I always feel better talking about the economy right after people talk about cybersecurity. It doesn't seem quite as scary when we get into it as we go along. Uh, you know, we've, uh, from a labor market standpoint, the pandemic's over. I understand that it is in a lot of other ways, but if you look back to unemployment rates now, we're all the way back to where we were before. In fact, we're back at full employment, which is why your labor markets are so tight. Uh, North Carolina came through the last five years looking really good from a growth standpoint. Transportation and warehouse jobs grew the fastest, and that's true in almost every state. Construction jobs exploded in the state. You know all the announcements you've been hearing over the last few years. And the tech industry is right there at the top with job growth. So huge amounts of new announcements and new job growth. But we're faced with some challenges. So we start off with just reporting context. The three great challenges that we face right now are first, that we don't have enough people. Population growth has been coming down for really most of the last part of the century, but certainly since the 1980s, we almost grow no people at all now, new into the labor force. Uh, that's gone down dramatically. And in the last few years, uh, international workers have gone down by 75% in the last five years coming into the country. So that's one of our challenges. The second, and I had to turn these in last week before the Ukraine blew up, is our consumer price index and our supply chain disruptions. Uh, they're huge on energy, they're huge on goods. Supply chains have caused the goods, energy we could have all day to talk about. That's not gonna get better in the short term. So through 2020, you're gonna be dealing with that as an issue. And then the third issue that we're all dealing with today is geopolitics and how that's gonna impact your businesses that are scattered all over the world and our supply chains that are all over the world and some of your individual uh, employees. So as we look at the state of tech, we do so in that context. The first thing to know is that the world runs on data analytics now. You make choices based on what the data says or what other people, third party data says. You don't go to a restaurant unless you check it out. You don't rent a VRBO unless you check it out. You don't check, you check out your partners. The good news for North Carolina is we're one of the very few states that scores in the top group of everybody. We're one of only four states that are rated as the best state for business by all the major uh, people who do that. And uh, so it's, you know, us and Texas and Tennessee and Georgia, and the growth has been dramatic in all of those places. So as we go into the outlook of tech, we do so in a context of North Carolina strength and national challenges. So the good news first, uh, and there's a bunch of it this year, we grew during the pandemic. Uh, tech workers grew by 2%. There's 275,000 workers in the industry in North Carolina now, uh, and over 22,000 tech establishments. The fun part about the establishment, when we've been doing this eight years, it's gone up every year. Last year was the biggest growth. Now, some of that is the national explosion in entrepreneurship. Last year was the biggest year for new companies in the history since the 1980s have been keeping that number. So a lot of people decided, well, you know what? I can do this on my own. If I'm at home, why don't I start my own business? So that's made our challenge for employees even greater. But the good news is there's a lot more companies out there. They're being innovative and almost an 8% jump in tech companies in the state. Uh, when we look at the groupings, for those of you who come every year, we look at energy tech, environmental tech, life sciences, and what's known as core IT, hardware, software, communication. All of them went up last year. All of them remain up over the five years. The biggest ones for us are the life science and the largest IT, and those grew by over 2%. So we're getting better at the things we're good at, and that's also a trend nationally. There's a deepening or a clustering that we've talked about for years, but became even more pronounced across the country in the last couple years. The reason for that is the depths of the labor markets. Companies move where they can get employees. Now, as the employees become remote and go everywhere, this is gonna be more interesting. It's gonna be hard for us to measure because a whole bunch of you have people now that you're counting that live somewhere else. And so we'll talk about that in a couple minutes. 
A lot of discussion this year about wages in North Carolina. This is our purchasing power compared to the national average. You can see that environmental tech, we're higher. Everything else is still a little bit better, a little more, more of a bargain in North Carolina, but those are big numbers. Average uh, incomes and in technology in North Carolina are big numbers and they drive a lot of the state economy. When we take it down a little bit long, uh, deeper and we look at what are known as super subsectors, we can see where the real growth is coming from. It's software, engineering, and R&D and testing inside the tech markets. All are uh, almost 30% growth over the last five years. Those are big jumps. You can see there's big establishments there, but software is the one that stands out to almost everybody. Uh, when we look at just overall employment growth in the last five years, North Carolina ranked fifth in the country. That's percentage-wise, that's Nevada, Washington, Utah, and Florida above us. A couple of those are just percentage numbers, but we're fifth fastest growing. Our projections have us ninth, but still in the top 10 over the next five years. Sorry, Brooks, we're still, still in the top 10, not quite the number, but I hope I'm wrong. And maybe the uh, announcements last year will drive that a little bit, uh, a little bit more. Nevada is clearly the hot spot, and uh, they're projected to continue to be so. That's an exodus out of California for companies. Every year we uh, seem to be first or second in the percentage of women in technology. This year we're second. We're, we're the only people we've ever lost to. The District of Columbia is first, and that's a little bit of an anomaly because the district's sort of an odd place, and we don't count them as a state. So Maine, Maine's beaten us the last two years. I went to Maine this summer. I didn't see any technology at all, so I'm, I'm assuming <laughs> I'm assuming there's about four of them, uh, four people in technology, two of them are women maybe, I don't know, I haven't figured it out. But, uh, but anyway, North Carolina, this is a really solid uh, indicator for us. Uh, and it's one that I know a lot of you care a lot about. The reason I say that is because we're gonna get to diversity in just a minute and I want y'all to keep, you know, glow, big glow, glow in the women uh, number for just a few more minutes. Tech diversity, we're 22nd. Now that's in the top half, that's the good news. Bad news is we've got a lot more work to do in diversity and getting technology into the state. And I heard uh, Microsoft talk earlier, I heard others, this is a big deal for all of us. Diversity Conference 24th coming up, Brooks, I think it is. Uh, this is important for all of us to get involved in. So every year we look at tech industries, companies that are technology companies, and we look at tech occupations jobs that are technology jobs. And I, the joke I make every year is 10 years from now, we're not gonna be able to do the industry one because everybody's gonna be a tech industry because more and more of the jobs in more and more industries are technology jobs. So when we first started this, they were almost the same number. It was an anomaly of the data, but they're about the same. Now, big difference, 345,000 occupations. And of the people that are working in tech occupations, only about a third are in tech industries. So just, you know, the person who's working in FinTech is working in financial services. The person working in ag tech is in agriculture. We're having to count those people differently. So we look at that. Once again, software, 47,000 people doing software as a job in North Carolina, average salary over 100, and growth in the last five years of almost 50%. This is the industry of growth in the area. And so if you're training, looking, doing anything, the software is, uh, is clearly the place to be looking these days. Uh, when we look at top five growth in tor numbers in that period of time, 15,000 net new software people, if we look in top five growth in percentage, it's actuarials. I tell everybody, data analytics, when I graduated with degrees that focused on that, nobody knew, A, they didn't know what data analytics was, and B, nobody hired them. So nowadays, data analytics, security analysts, you've heard all these themes already today. The data supports that, that that's where the growth is in the state. So if we look at the gender distribution, we see that that 34% uh, compared to the 51% North Carolina population, that ranks us second. If you look at the racial distribution, you see a little more of the data that we can look at to see where we need to do better. And so, you know, more, more whites, more Asians than the population uh, in, in the technology fields, but we 
we fail in the African-American black side and in the Hispanic uh, employees. So that's where our, where our opportunity lies for better training, better recruitment, more people in. Um, and uh, as we go forward, I think that's really the challenge for the state from a data standpoint. The other good news is that we're spreading. These are tech occupations that represent more than 3% of all the occupations in the counties. And yes, Wake and Durham and Mecklenburg and New Hanover are deep places with over 6%. But you can see that uh, since we started doing this map, there's more, more than twice as many counties as there were when we first started these maps. Occupation technology spreading all across the state becomes important for more and more places. When we look at those tech occupation growth, again, North Carolina is top 10, number seven. So not only are we growing the industries, we're growing the jobs in other industries. And we're a state where people will put their FinTech, AgTech, dot, 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 tech, and, uh, and that will help us as we go forward. Uh, when we look at average wages adjusted for cost of living, sixth in the country in technology. So again, really strong. Uh, I know that people have discussions all the time and as we're poaching employees from other parts of the country and trying to arbitrage wages and do all of those things, this becomes even more interesting. But North Carolina wages are really solid compared to the rest of the country. Uh, most of the people in technology have entry level education requirements that still require a bachelor's degree or higher. I've been hearing for years that that might not be the case going forward, but at least so far it remains the case. And so this is a lot about getting people with the right uh, classes they need in high school to get into college courses that get them through this. So uh, I hope that over time this changes a little, but it hasn't so far. And the completions keep going up. Um, it might be UNC Charlotte, but computer and information sciences are the place we've been adding the most new uh, graduates. But you can see it's been going up in most fields. Physical sciences are about the only one flat, everybody else going up a little, but engineering continues to rise, but computer science is the big jump for us in education. Uh, we are also the fourth ranked place in America in the change in STEM education program completers. So that's a high number. That's Kentucky, Vermont, and Utah in front of us. Kentucky has made this a top priority in their state. Seems to be working from a completion standpoint. I don't know that the tech industries have been following them, but the completers have been there. And number four for North Carolina is really solid. As, as was said before, we started an innovation index this year. Uh, the goal was to develop a way to look at metros to see how strong they were in the state. We created a, uh, an index, a multi-factor index that looked at all 110 metros in the country, top 110. Uh, both Durham, Raleigh, and Charlotte showed up in our top 30. So three in the state of the top 30, so that's 10% of them uh, here. And so really strong polls for the state. Other places in the state scored well also, and that's part of the data that's on the, uh, on the website. When you take away this this year, the, uh, the tech employment growth is great. The tech sector employment growth expected to go up. Women in business also up, and median income all top 10, all of those. When we look a little deeper, and this uh, on the report, if you go to NC STIR, there are dozens and dozens of these comparisons. Higher education R&D, as a percentage of our state product, we're number four. Venture capital, we're now in the top 10, number eight. Startups from universities, top 10, number seven. All of those green bars on the right means you're in the top 15 in the country. So huge number of assets that help push us forward as we look at that. Um, we also looked at how the pandemic impacted us. This is a job loss, and so I apologize for the orientation of the chart, but the further you go that way on the chart, the more job losses. The people on this side in the green are where you grew over this period of time, and the up and down bar, uh, the, the vertical axis, is wages. As you can see, what drove us with job growth during that period of time was IT, life science, and energy technology. So what helped us through this pandemic from an economic standpoint was the strength of the tech sector in, in the state. Uh, we have a lot of competitive advantages. We go through some of those in the report. From a workforce, the population growth is strong. The university output is great. Uh, the community college system, which I don't think we mentioned today, is outstanding with their 58 community colleges. Our cost is still competitive in the, in the country, uh, top 10 tax climate. Um, 
Our energy prices are pretty good here too. We have a reliable energy grid. The broadband is better and better and the ports are adding capacity. And then financially, uh, venture capital continues to go up. The state is aggressive with its incentive packages, especially for technology. And we rank in the top 10, actually, every year for regulatory and legal uh, environments. So we look at where the negatives are, where the weaknesses are every year to try to help Brooks and his team be able to, to educate legislators on what they ought to be doing to help the tech industry. Uh, I think he's pretty successful with that. They're, they're always interested because of the quality of the jobs and the potential for growth in them. Uh, the good news, long term, our estimates right now, we started growing faster than the country uh, at the beginning of the last decade. And that gap is widening. So tech is concentrating in some states in America and a lot bigger way than it used to. North Carolina is one of those states. We expect these numbers to continue to get better. And I hope that got you back on time. So that's as fast as I can talk as a boy from Dallas, North Carolina. Uh, but thank you very much.